First at six, Rideout says the truck toll gantries on the state's highways will be shut off by the end of the day. That's after a judge says Rhode Island violated the Constitution by tolling only trucks. The state has relied on the tolls for years to pay for transportation projects. We begin our team coverage with 12 News reporter Sheena Lofshuto, who tells us what happens next. Well, with all of these new developments, the first question you might ask is, will Rhode Island ever just toll all the cars out on the roadways? And the short answer from the governor's office is no. They've been controversial from the start, drawing criticism, especially from those getting tolled. A federal judge has ruled Rhode Island's truck tolling system, which only tolls tractor trailers, unconstitutional. Rhode Island was the only place that had a truck only tolling system, and it's the only place that has tried to have a truck only tolling system. So this was clearly novel, which was another issue that the, the judge clearly picked up on. This is the lead counsel for the American Trucking Association, who was among the groups suing the state. The federal judge found Rhode Island's truck tolls violate the Commerce Clause of the country's constitution. The tolls are a key funding source for the Roadworks programs, which aims to fix the state's bridges. At the end of the day, the state is immune from suit, um, and so uh, that, that money uh, we can't recover. But we did want to stop it from continuing. There are 12 toll gantries in the Ocean State, found on 195, 295, and 95. The federal judge who filed the decision says it's unconstitutional to only target one class of vehicles, ordering the tolls to stop collecting money within the next two days. A spokesperson for the McKee administration says the governor does not support and would not make a system where all cars get tolled. That's something that would also have to be approved by the General Assembly. And both the House Speaker and Senate President say, regardless of how this lawsuit plays out, that's not going to happen. Now, we have been tracking this really for years now, and the whole point of the tolling system was to raise funding to fix Rhode Island bridges. My colleague Tim White now looks into whether or not any conditions have changed since then. Tim? Sheena, when Roadworks was announced in 2015, the goal was to get bridges to 90% structurally sufficient by 2025, and state leaders made it clear it wouldn't be cheap. In 2015, then Governor Gina Raimondo announced her plan to fix Rhode Island's bridges. We'll be going from 50 out of 50, some of the worst roads and bridges, to 90% structural sufficiency. That's something we can be proud of. No one argued the state's bridges were in a crisis, but not all agreed how to pay for it. Those costs will be passed on. A Target 12 review of years of Department of Transportation data shows at the time in 2015, just 75% of bridges in the state were deemed structurally sufficient. As of June 2022, that number has risen to roughly 83%. Or put another way, there were 247 structurally deficient bridges in 2015. That number has dropped to 180. The repairs have been paid for with an increase in borrowing and tolls on large commercial trucks. In 2018, the state collected $7.2 million in tolls. That went up to $15 million in 2019, $34 million in 2020, and nearly $40 million in 2021. For a total of nearly $100 million collected in tolling of large trucks in the last four years. In all, the state has collected 27.6 million tolls since 2018. There are currently 12 toll gantries across Rhode Island's highways. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, 12 News.